In this video, I'm going to show you how to do multiple regression with bootstrapping in SPSS. And the example study is trying to predict earnings, the dependent variable, with education and IQ as independent variables. And as you may recall, there's a substantial amount of skew associated with these data. So I'll just show that to you briefly. We can see that earnings has a skew of 3.447, which is much greater than the 2.0 that I suggest as the maximum for normal estimation theory. And here's that skewed variable. It almost looks like there's probably an outlier there as well. So there's heavy positive skew in these data, and I would not feel confident about normal theory estimation with these data. So conducting a multiple regression with bootstrapping is quite easy. You just have to click a couple of extra buttons. So go into Analyze, Regression, Linear, put Earnings, the dependent variable, in the dependent box, Education and IQ in the independence box, and Bootstrapping, which does not assume any level of normality. Click Number of Samples, change that to 2. I think for multiple regression, you need 2,000 samples as a minimum. And then click Bias Corrected Accelerated, because this is a more accurate approach to estimating 95% confidence intervals than the percentile method is. Click Continue and click OK. And SPSS is going to take a few seconds in order to run all 2,000 resamples in this bootstrap analysis. All right, so the first table SPSS outputs is a bit of a reminder that you just conducted bootstrapping with 2,000 resamples and you specified 95% confidence, which is probably what you're going to specify in the vast majority of cases. That also reminds you that you used bias corrected accelerated for the confidence intervals. Now I used method enter as the multiple regression procedure. You could use other types of methods. Here I used method enter. Model summary, the model R and R squared are still tested with just the regular ANOVA framework based on asymptotic normal distribution theory. So this is not a bootstrap result. I talk about getting a 95% confidence interval based on bootstrapping for the R and R square in a separate video that follows this one. So as far as the bootstrap utility is concerned in SPSS, you do not get bootstrap results for the overall model R square. The next table is just asymptotic normal distribution theory results. These are not the bootstrap results. These are just the regular ordinary results you'd get from SPSS. So go down to the last table, bootstrap for coefficients, and you'll see that the table looks a bit different. You got bootstrap here again, and you get p-values associated with each of your predictors as well as the constant which we're not interested in. And you can see that education is still identified as a statistically significant predictor, p less than 0 0.001, with 95% confidence intervals ranging between 1,949 to 5,267. Now these two confidence intervals, lower bound and upper bound, are around this point estimate of 3,756. So this is the unstandardized slope. A one unit increase in education is associated with a $3,756 increase in earnings. And the 95% confidence interval is between 1,949 at the lower bound and as high as 5,267 in the upper bound. Now this is based on the bias corrected accelerated 95% confidence intervals. And we have the p less than 0 0.001 here, which is consistent with having lower and up bounds that are both positive because the point estimate is positive. Now IQ has a unstandardized slope of 501.978. Now something I'll point out is that the unstandardized slopes are exactly the same between the asymptotic normal distribution theory approach and the bootstrapping approach. That's always going to be the case. You get exactly the same point estimates. In bootstrapping, what you get are different p-values and different confidence intervals. And so for IQ, it is no longer a statistically significant predictor. p equal 0 0.051, which is different than the 0 0.017 identified with asymptotic normal distribution theory. So this is a pretty big difference between IQ, asymptotic normal distribution theory, and IQ bootstrapping, p equal 0 0.051. Now, I'll note that you're not going to get exactly the same results that I get if you rerun this analysis. In fact, I didn't get these results that I published in the textbook. They're slightly different to this because each time I rerun this analysis, I get slightly different results. 
Maybe it's an argument to use even larger resamples. You know, in practice, you're just going to get slightly different results for each reanalysis you do with bootstrapping. Now, I point out in the textbook that the confidence intervals associated with this predictor is actually identified as statistically significant because the lower bound is $84. So for each one unit increase in IQ, there's a 501 you know, $502 rounded increase in earnings, and the bias-corrected accelerated confidence interval suggests that that effect is statistically significant because this did not intersect with zero. So these confidence intervals are inconsistent with the p-value. Now, I mentioned in the textbook, you have a decision to make. You can either make an argument that the bias-corrected accelerated is something that you can trust more than the p-value. I don't think that's really a strong argument because you get essentially the same result whether you use bias-corrected or not. Exactly why this happened is difficult to explain, at least for me. I suspect the reason it happened is because these data are heteroscedastic. You might remember in the foundation section of the chapter, I did not satisfy the assumption of homoscedasticity with these data. So these data are both insufficiently normally distributed to carry out asymptotic normal distribution theory statistics, and they're also heteroscedastic. So that's quite a combination there. And my hunch is that regular bootstrapping, whether bias corrected or not, cannot handle this properly. But there is a technique called the wild bootstrap that can handle both non-normality and heteroscedastic data. And I encourage you to sec check out that section of the textbook where I talk about the wild bootstrap, which is a little bit later in the advanced topic section of this chapter. So that is how you can do a bootstrap multiple regression in SPSS.